Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to Watts Way Farms. My name is Scott. Thanks for tuning in for another one of my videos. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the process to go through to build a temporary kind of DIY, cheap but very functional training pen for some new piglets. And the way I normally shoot my videos, if those of you have been following along, is, you know, I don't do a whole lot of editing. I kind of just shoot the video in several clips, piece them together with minimum editing, and then throw it out there for the world to see. Good, bad, ugly, indifferent, however it plays out, it's how it is. Now, this video is a little bit different in that I've already shot everything, and then I decided to go back and reshoot this intro. And the reason being is this video took a little bit of a change as I went through uh, the process. Now, we're still going to see the eight little piglets is what it ended up being that we got actually on the farm yesterday and they're doing great but you know this message or this video is there at the end and i really hope that y'all stick through to the end i'm gonna talk a little bit about why i think you should buy your meat from a local farmer wherever you're at, um, you're gonna pay a little bit more, but you know, there's a reason. Nobody that I'm aware of that raises pigs in the manner that we do here on our farm is getting rich or making any, really any noticeable money. We do this for because of our love of the land, the love of these animals, and to provide a humane, humanely raised, stress-free, happy animal in this case it's pigs i also do cattle and am looking to add probably at least chickens and probably rabbits and other enterprises to my farm as we go but you know i talk a little bit about the capos there's are the i like to went back and looked up the acronym a concentrated animal feed well actually i forgot it again but anyway it's basically where they grow large quantities of animals in very small space and i give you some stats uh, on that. So anyway, I hope you'll hang out with us. It's going to be a good video, I think, uh, once I get it all pieced together and hopefully uploaded this evening or tomorrow. So thanks. So here's the basic setup of supplies for this build. Some five and a half foot T-post and some, I guess these are 16 foot hog panels, which I guess is the standard length. Now the hog panels, first time I've actually worked with hog panels, but I've used cattle panels which are basically the same thing i guess the big difference is hog panels are 34 inches tall versus uh, 48 i guess on a cattle panel and on a hog panel the the wire is closer together here at the bottom so the squares or the rectangles aren't as big i guess to keep the little pigs in now if you've had done any sort of farm life slash livestock management at all you've used these panels and maybe what i've doing i'm doing it way wrong but i've always had trouble attaching these things to each other and to the t-post when you put two of these together you kind of overlap on a t-post the little wire that comes with the t-post the clips it just is really hard to put those together so a lot of thought into this and i came up with what i thought was a pretty good idea on how to put these together let me show you what i've done so i think everybody in the world probably recognizes this amazon logo and packaging it's been quite a while doing some research online trying to figure out a better way to connect hog panels together and i found this little tool hog ring pliers and this thing called hog greens and thought that I had just hit pay dirt, that this was exactly what I needed. Now here's the actual little haul ring, and this is a three quarter inch one, and it simply just goes in that little plier jaws and clamps down. And now this was the biggest one I could find um, on Amazon. They had smaller sizes, but this was mainly the biggest one I could find. And what it appeared these are normally used for them is not, even though they're called hog rings and hog 
spring pliers that these are mainly used for like upholstery when people are attaching fabric to the other underside of upholstery. I guess they just clip these on. So the challenge with what I thought was going to be a slam dunk of a great idea was that there was no way this little three quarter inch ring was going to squeeze around that and give me in and just just wasn't going to work it's just too small so these are going back and i'm back to the drawing board how do you neatly and easily attach the uh, hog panels together i mean uh, like I said, i've seen the people just wire them together and to me that just looks tacky so i'm gonna have to keep looking so then i'm doing some more research trying to find this pig ring of a size that'll work because i just feel like this is not that original of an idea and there ought to be something out there that'll do what i need it to do if only i can find it and what i came across and i don't know if it's just because i'm that naive and that new to this whole pig farming enterprise but i found these pictures and I guess these pictures show what hog rings really are for. And I guess I was a little curious, if you will, when I first started, you know, looking at these and I found the smaller ones that are used mainly on upholstery. If they're used mainly on upholstery, why are they not called upholstery rings instead of pig rings? But I guess the original use of these pig rings is for to keep pigs from, put it in their nose to keep them from rooting. And I don't, I guess I don't know. I I don't know why somebody would do that to a pig. I'm not going to sit here and judge um, other people on how they raise their pigs, but obviously there's a, enough people that do this or find reason to do this that they actually create a entire product line of pig rings. Uh, I guess the purpose of the traditional reason you would buy pig rings is to put in pig noses to keep them from rooting in your pastures or in their paddocks and doing what I believe is the basic nature of pigs and it's rooting to me that would be almost like trying to keep a cow from eating grass I just again I just I, I don't understand it pigs root so I can tell you um as I search for this solution to my looking for some pig rings, I will never uh, do this to a pig on my farm. It goes against everything. Uh, we started this little farm adventure on, and that was to raise animals as humanely and ethically and happily and stress-free and really trying to put them in an environment that is most natural so my pigs are going to root and forage my cows are going to eat grass uh, when we add chickens they're going to be pasture raised turkeys any animal we have here on the farm is going to be raised as naturally and happy and healthily healthily if that's a word as stress-free as possible but anyway i'll get off my soapbox but now that i know the original use from them that gives me a better idea of where to go to look to find um what i need and then lo and behold a trip to my local tractor supply it looks like they had what i needed all along but instead of looking over in the hardware section with the hammers and the nails and the screws and that i needed to go over to the veterinary section where they had the castrating kits and the vaccines and syringes and that sort of thing and sure enough producers pride hog ring and it had this thing dexter hump hill shoat rings and then they had these big old bad boys now i have not tried this yet this is still brand new in the package but just based off of the size of this compared to the other one uh i think this is going to work actually in looking at my bag from tractor supply it looks like i actually got i got three containers of these rings but i actually got two of these short rings and one of the hog rings and the hog ring actually it's just a little bit bigger than the shoat ring 
but if you look here's the hog ring on the left the short ring next to it and then next to that is that little bitty amazon special ring that i got so i think this is gonna work like i said i haven't tried it yet we're gonna try it together here on the video for the first time but um let's see if it works all right so here's the short ring loaded up in the hog ring pliers clearly big enough to go around that like i wanted one squeeze Oop, one squeeze and almost exactly what i was hoping for i got a way to hold these together now i could probably come back i guess with a pair of pliers maybe and tighten it up a little bit more but that is what i'm talking about so let's i'm gonna run them all the way down the side let's see how this works so there's the first corner done and i think that is working perfectly so though you will never see a pig at watts way farms with a nose ring in its nose to prevent it from foraging i think this is a great use of these little hog rings i have the basic perimeter of the piglet pen as i'm now calling it laid out and put together and i have to say i think the using the hog clips was worked out beautifully let me show you so here's where two of these panels overlap and i just overlap by one square and then i put a hog clip around every overlapping section and i'm telling you that's firm and then i also on the corners did the same thing i got one of these hog clips on every single square going down and then just standard five and a half foot t-post uh, with the clips all the way around and this is in really good shape so right here at this corner i want to put a door of some sort uh, just a i've got this little hinge that you kind of just after you cut it you uh feed this through the two the section and it'll it makes like a hinge i've used these this obviously cattle pad on length because of how high it is but it'll work for this and i may cut it off or may let it run long but as i was laying this out and thinking about it i realized that in order to cut one of these and then have you know two of these vertical sections line up i'm gonna lose one square so in laying this out i made this corner basically this long run here instead of being straight i had it come in one square so that when i cut this back and i don't know how big the door is going to be probably right in here somewhere that extra square that i lose from here should make the ends line up perfectly so here's the finished door. I think it turned out pretty good. As you can see, I've got a little bit extra of this hinge sticking up, which I don't like, but I also don't want to cut that because if I ever want to use it on the cattle panel, I need that extra length. I went ahead and put an extra T-post right here just to give me something to push against. And... I think it works pretty good. I'll have to come up with a latch later. What do you think, Ava? Yes. Does it work? Yes, sir. Oh, I like it as well. I think that's going to keep the piglets in? Yes, sir. I think so yes, as well. Sir. You excited about getting the piglets? Yes, sir. Great. We need ten, five piglets. No, nine piglets. We're getting nine piglets. Nine piglets? Nine piglets. We're getting their piglets? Well, no, it's different from a different guy. We're getting on Sunday. So, all right. So, this is a this part of the build is basically done i need to i need to put my pig feeder in here i'm gonna put one of my gravity bulk feeders that i did earlier built, built earlier and 
put one of those in here and then put a water in here. And I've also got a tarp. I'm going to try to stretch over part of this for give them some sort of little bit of cover. Or I may build a little A-frame something. Um, I haven't decided yet. I mean, I've got these trees so that'll give some pretty good cover. But I don't know. I was thinking I might need something more. We'll see how it turns out. This is kind of what I was thinking for just a makeshift kind of shade for them, but I'm not 100% sure how well this is going to work. This is just a $5 tarp from Harbor Freight and some bungee cords. I'm going to go see if I can find a few more bungee cords to even this out, but I still don't know how it's going to work once it gets some rain on it. I'm afraid it may pull down in the middle. Uh, I guess the good news on that, if the weatherman's right, I'm going to know by in the morning. And because it's supposed to rain pretty good tonight, maybe some chances of some severe weather coming through. So it's Friday now, and the piglets show up on Sunday. So two days from now, so y'all won't see this video until the piglets are here. And I'm going to put it all together as one video. But we'll see how this works. So I'm going to put some more bunch of cords on it this evening. And in the morning when I come out, if it's got a bunch of water pulled on it, I guess I'll just build a makeshift A-frame or something for them. So we shall see. It's 8.30 now on Saturday morning. And it's actually still raining just a little bit. And it has been raining pretty much nonstop. Um, since around about midnight last night. I don't know how many inches, but it was quite heavy rain there for a while. So I think it's a good test of my temporary tarp type shelter. And I guess I actually think it's, it did pretty well. I've got a, I think you can tell, and there's a very little bit of pulling going on right there but obviously most of it ran off uh or else that thing would be in a lot worse shape so though for some reason i can't quite put my finger on i still don't love this uh solution my little piglets are only going to be in here for probably two weeks before they actually move into a paddock in this set of woods uh, this might work. I don't like how it's pulling the fence here. I don't know if that T post there is a result of me just putting it in crooked or of the bungee cords pulling it. I may just put one or two more T posts in just to hold it. I mean, I've got a few extra uh, that aren't being used right now just to make sure that that's not what it is. But I'm going to go with that. I'm actually going to have a hard time, I think, finishing this today. My rain app says, or my weather app says, that the rain is supposed to be pretty much on for the rest of the day. Two big waves coming through. It looks like most of the eastern side of the country is getting some pretty heavy rain today. And I'm just in a little bit of a lull. So I'm going to do some quick herd checks real quick. And if I can get out, I've still got to run the the electrical wire i'm going to come in on the inside of this about eight inches all the way around and run electric hot wire to keep the door to these pigs should already be trained hot wire they're born out on a hot wire paddock the guy i'm getting from that's where he raises them but i'm going to add a little extra just to be sure they're going to get it uh in here just to be sure that they are trained to it as well the only thing missing now from this little piglet pen, as Ava and I have become to call it, is the piglets. Let me show you the finishing touches that I put on it and see what you think. So I ran 12 and a half gauge aluminum high tensile wire. I ran two of them, one at six inches and one at 12 inches all the way around the perimeter now, i haven't decided i put a loop on this side right here and they're connected to each other and i've got two handles i may 
just for the sake of consistency, probably make a little small um, gate, I guess, to go right there. Um, I don't know. In hindsight, it probably would have been just as good with a single wire. I don't know that there's really much value to a second wire inside this pen. I mean, the they're supposed the piglets that I'm getting tomorrow were born on a pasture with I guess it's about an eight acre paddock, one big pasture for his entire herd of pigs. He farrows on pasture and they're hot wire trained basically from birth uh, as a result. But I'm gonna put them in here for a couple weeks and just to make sure that they're trained before they head actually into those woods right behind here. So no way I'm just making it hot. This is literally about eight inches from the middle line of my high titsel fence for my cows that you can see out over there. So I just use half of a old jumper cable wire just to connect there and it connect to my fence over there. Now on my little makeshift tarp um, cover, I'll be honest, I still don't love it, but it's working. I mean, we have gotten a bunch, I mean, inches of rain yesterday and so far today. I'm actually surprised I've been able to get outside as long as I have uh, today to finish this up. It's been raining on me off and on, not so bad that I felt the need to run for shelter, like the weather said, but it's been kind of rainy all day. So I've just got this with little bungees connected to the fence on that side. And I did, as you can see, I put a couple of extra T posts on the inside because I did notice it was pulling the fence. And a little bit longer bungees over here, but same thing, a couple extra T posts. I probably could use one more right there. Um, and you know it's good so i got the water back over there the that's the what i believe is the world's easiest uh best pick water you don't have to cut any holes in the top of your barrels like most of them with the little trick that i discovered uh in making these if you haven't seen that video uh, you ought to check it out because that really does is i believe the easiest uh pig water DIY that you're gonna find. I've put one of my uh, DIY bulk pig feeders in here. I'm not sure that these little piglets when I get them tomorrow are gonna be ready for this feeder. Their noses, I don't know how big they are. I mean, they're gonna be right at eight weeks old and I'm gonna wait and see if they're able to manipulate that and get their nose up in there uh, in order to eat. If not, I still have my DIY tire, three tire feeder that I've made that I can just as easily put in here. So other than this little gate that I may or may not build, um, this thing's ready to go, ready for the pig. So I guess we'll touch base again tomorrow and wrap this video up when the um, piglets arrive. What do you think, Ava Claire? Good. This is a good pig pen? Yes, sir. It's going to hold some good piglets tomorrow? Yes, sir. You mean 10? Nine. Nine? Yes. Like nine, ten. Hey, are you excited to get the new piggies tomorrow? Yes, sir. All right. Well, we can't wait. Well, let's check back in tomorrow. I thought the next clip I was going to film for this video was going to be tomorrow morning after we got the pigs and we started giving them their shots that we're going to give them when they come in and weigh them and tag them and all that good stuff but we had a little bit of a like i said we've had some rain pretty much all day but we had a pretty good little band of storms come through and let me show you what happened so this is my tarp shelter it still in one piece but it is laying on the ground and that looks like all the bungee cords on the back. I don't know where they're at. I mean, they're probably laying around the ground somewhere. I'm not going to try to find them right now. So I don't think that this was a poor design flaw. I actually think this was kind of a fluke incident. Let me show you why. Here 
is a profile of my shed. And this thing is old and, you know, probably been here 30 years or more. But you can see where this roof stops up until about an hour ago, it went all the way to this end. So here is the, what's left of the roof of my shed. And as you can see, here's all of the lumber. Down here is the sheets of metal. Be careful, sweetheart. There's uh, gonna be nails sticking up. And literally here's one piece of the tin off the top, just wrapped around this guideline for the telephone pole. I don't know how strong the wind is, but this telephone pole, which has been here for about a year now, I mean, that thing's moved good three, four inches, probably three fingers. I mean, it moved that entire pole. And unfortunately, we could, I don't know if you can, if I can zoom in or see it. But because of that little piece right there being disconnected, I'm also now without power until the power company comes up. That piece at the bottom is supposed to connect up to the top. So to give you an idea how far it went, here's the roof. And then right over there, probably 60 yards, is my shed so it literally whatever the storm was picked it up and dropped it right here oh there's a the furthest pieces are over there and there's one piece on the other side of the driveway but i mean no damage oh, i've got my high tensile fence right there no damage to that so it literally must have just picked it up and just dropped it right there i was inside um the r inside our rv which is pretty scary thought um had that thing been a little bit further over my daughter and i could have been tumbling i guess down that hill over there um but i guess we were fortunate and blessed that it wasn't worse than it was